<laughs> okay. Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Holly May. I'm glad to have you with us again. I to open this session. I'd like to call on Chaplain Greg Brown. If you please, Jack. Yes, sir. Captain. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, in these days of uncertainty, we long for your never-failing presence to be with us and to guide us. Grant our leaders wisdom that they may help protect the people of our state, nation, and world. May we lean on the wisdom of science and our faith so that we do not give in to fear. Bless all who work to lessen the breadth and depth of this virus and give the people of South Carolina a deep sense of security knowing that Team South Carolina is always ready, always there, ready to respond. Hear us, your servants, as we pray in your most holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you coming today. We have a number of people who will provide information, and we'll have questions when we get to the end and try to answer all your questions. Effective immediately, I've ordered the closing of all schools in the state of South Carolina, starting tomorrow, Monday, March 16th. That means no schools starting tomorrow. Schools will remain closed until the end of the month, that is March 31st. This includes pre-K through 12, all universities, colleges, and technical colleges. Additionally, I ask that, and urge that public gatherings, both indoors and outdoors, be limited to 100 people or less. This does not include state or local government meetings or businesses or employers. Also, all local and municipal elections, shall, the elections shall be postponed and rescheduled after May the 1st. Candidates, however, filing for state, local, and federal offices shall continue as currently scheduled. County elections offices shall continue to operate as normal. Yesterday, I requested that all utilities in South Carolina not suspend or disconnect any essential services for non-payment for the duration of the current state of emergency. I repeat that request today. I have granted state agency leaders the maximum flexibility to protect their older or at-risk employee, employees by allowing them to work from home. Additionally, all non-essential work-related travel by state employees is now prohibited. And the Board of Medical Examiners and the Board of Nursing have procedures in place to issue temporary licenses for out-of-state physicians, physician's assistants, nurses, and respiratory care practitioners within 24 hours. And additionally, there is no fee for these licenses, which will, be, will last for 90 days, temporary licenses. <clears throat> I want to emphasize that there is no shortage of testing capabilities in the labs in South Carolina. The DHEC lab and the private labs currently have more than adequate supplies, more than adequate, to conduct all the tests we need. And the DHEC lab will be resupplied with more tests this week. In addition, the Federal Drug Administration has today approved the Medical University of South Carolina for COVID-19 testing. MUSC has said that they will likely start processing these tests in their lab by the end of this week. And as you already know, the MUSC.care is where you can go online to receive screening from anywhere in this state for free at this time. That was announced last week. We've heard a lot about masks and their scarcity. As the Surgeon General Jerome Adams has said, there is no need, I repeat, there is no need for the public to buy masks or wear masks. Our health care professionals are the ones who critically need to have these masks. 
because they are the ones that are providing care and it will keep them safe. DHEC has requested that the federal government release South Carolina's allocation of medical supplies from the strategic national stockpile. Items such as respirators, masks, face shields, gloves, and gowns. But that allocation will not be everything our health care professionals may need for the duration of this coronavirus situation. The private manufacturers have cranked up production, as you have heard, but it'll take them a bit of time to get them out into the flow in the market. That is why it is important for the public who do not need these masks not to go out and buy them. All the decisions that we have made thus far have been to do one thing, and that's to save the lives of the people of South Carolina. School closings are inconvenient. We know that. They're inconvenient for everybody, for working parents, for families, as well as employers. We understand that. Parents, if you've not done so already, now is the time to explain to your children in an age-appropriate way how serious the coronavirus situation is. It is time for parents to impress upon their children how important things like social distancing, that is keeping your distance from someone coughing, sneezing, that sort of thing, personal hygiene, washing your hands all day long, impress upon the children how important that is and also that will help us remember ourselves. And we must also explain the importance of limiting exposure to those considered at risk, like the elderly or the infirm. I ask that our faith community in South Carolina, that is our churches, parishes, synagogues, periodically check in on your members especially those who are considered at risk, the elderly and the infirm. Many of these older citizens live by themselves, have trouble getting around, have difficulty communicating, and this is an excellent thing for our faith community to undertake. I'll say finally, we are going to get through this, and we're going to get through this, as we've gotten through other things, by remaining calm using common sense, being deliberate, treating everyone like a neighbor, and demonstrating courtesy and compassion towards each other. Courtesy and compassion means that we don't purchase more supplies that we need. There's no need to hoard food or supplies of any kind. I assure you the stores will remain open and they will be restocked and restocked and restocked President Trump has declared today as a national day of prayer. We had the chaplain here a moment ago. I ask that every South Carolinian pray for the health and safety of our neighbors, of our families, and for our nation. Superintendent Spearman. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon, everyone. I first want to assure all the parents of school children in this state that we are still in a partnership and principals, superintendents, teachers are working together as we speak to prepare to continue instruction for your children and also to be sure that those who need to be fed will be fed. The South Carolina Department of Education Office of Health and Nutrition has been granted a waiver from the United States Department of Agriculture that allows our summer feeding options to be used during this school closure. We have also received a waiver for flexibility so that meals can be the grab and go type. We'll either have you come by and pick up the meals or we'll be delivering those to you on our school buses. These waivers will allow communities to provide two nutritious meals to students who may not have access to them outside of the school day. Applications to begin that service are already being screened by our office and will be received promptly in the morning. Our transportation office is in talks with service providers 
to equip some 3,000 school buses that we have the hardware to deliver Wi-Fi. We're asking our service providers to work with us so that these buses could be used in remote areas so that folks could come to those buses throughout the day if they do not have Wi-Fi access. We're also encouraging districts to utilize our state fleet of about 6,000 buses to drop off instructional materials to students along bus routes if they are unable to come to school and for the pickup. Our state and federal accountability. We will seek authority from the General Assembly and the State Board of Education to waive any statutory requirement and regulation as they relate to emergency needs. I also want to announce, and I have the support of Governor McMaster, excuse me, Governor McMaster, that I will be seeking a waiver from the United States Department of Education to suspend federally required student assessments that are traditionally administered during the spring. There's no need for our teachers and our students to have this anxiety of what's going to happen on testing. So we are going to ask to suspend those tests this year. We've asked school districts to submit 10-day instructional plans to our agency for review. Schools will be asked to implement these plans during closures. Additionally, I have been in discussion with Anthony Padgett, Padgett, the president of SCETV. His staff and our folks are working together to reschedule the ETV programming that is delivered on their regular TV station. As you know, those are different channels that children view during, inside their school, but that, those channels are not available at home. So we will be making an announcement tomorrow about how that scheduling will be and any child can access that on their own TV at home. We are also working to supplement instructional um, availability. The State Department runs Virtual SC. This is already a program that some 34,000 students across our state access for free each day, whether they're public school, private school, or homeschool students. We will be posting additional information and seeking additional licensure so that, so that more students can take advantage of this wonderful opportunity. We're working hard together. I want to thank again all of the school administrators, teachers who have been working to prepare for this moment, and we believe that we have made the decision at the right time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Dr. Linda Bell, Department of Health and Environmental Control. Good afternoon. As an update, DHEC is investigating nine new possible cases of COVID-19 novel coronavirus, including three from Kershaw County, three from Horry County, two from Anderson County, and one from Greenville County. One of the cases from Kershaw County was an employee of a child care facility. The person was not ill while they were at work. We have notified the facility. However, we do not consider the staff and children of the child care facility at risk from exposure in that center. The center is also following the governor's closure of schools in Kershaw and Lancaster County and is currently not open. In addition, we announced six new cases yesterday, including one new case from Lexington County, who is a resident of the Lexington Medical Center Extended Care Skilled Nursing Facility. The individual is currently hospitalized and is isolated and has no known exposures to another case and no recent history of travel to an impacted area. We are working with the facility to identify close contacts and are providing guidance about infection control measures to prevent possible spread. To date, DHEC's Public Health Laboratory has, conduct, has conducted 263 tests, 28 positive and 235 are negative. While we are not currently seeing widespread transmission in South Carolina, we want people to be prepared and to remain calm and rational as more cases occur. Recognize that the majority of illnesses seen are relatively mild, the type of illness for which you might not normally even seek medical care. 
Testing individuals without symptoms is not recommended. We do not recommend that everyone who is ill get a test to see if they have the COVID-19 infection. If disease activity increases significantly, we will advise people to stay home, get better, and seek medical care if symptoms worsen. This will allow our healthcare system and our healthcare providers to give care to those who need it most. Our top priorities have been and will continue to be preventing the spread of disease and protecting the public health. We know that many South Carolinians are concerned about what impact this virus may have on themselves, their loved ones in our state. The number of cases that ultimately occur will depend in part on all of our efforts to practice good personal hygiene, like hand washing, and protecting others by staying home when ill. We have been emphasizing cover your cough to protect others. But as a reminder, if you have a respiratory illness with a cough and fever, you should not be in public places, at large social gatherings, or visiting others, particularly those who are vulnerable to developing serious illness. Based on what we know so far, the CDC expects that many people in the United States will at some point in time, either this year or next, be exposed to this virus. This will include residents here in South Carolina. However, it's important to note that most people will likely not develop serious illness. While this is occurring as we expected it to, we still must continue to practice measures to help safeguard against illness, including practicing good hygiene. That means routinely washing your hands and covering your mouth when you cough. Individuals with signs of illness are asked to take seriously the recommendation to stay home from school and work and not attend public gatherings. From what we're seeing, this illness is very similar to the seasonal flu. So consider the measures that we take each year to help protect ourselves and those around us from flu outbreaks. Our public health professionals are continuing to monitor the status of the virus in South Carolina so that our state and its communities make informed decisions. As part of this measured approach, we are constantly monitoring our epidemiologic data and following CDC for evidence-based strategies to slow the spread of disease in our communities. As cases increase, we are prioritizing identifying close contacts who are at high risk of illness from exposure and who may be more likely to experience more serious illness. This includes our nursing homes and assisted living facilities, as well as other vulnerable populations with unique circumstances. We, like other states, are also beginning to practice social distancing for communities as a whole. We were able to quickly work with the Lexington Medical Center Extended Care Skilled Nursing Facility to identify and isolate contacts. In addition, the center had already taken proactive measures like limiting visitors. The facility has been completely cooperative as we work through our contact investigation and staff are abiding by DHECs and CDC's recommendations for helping to protect against, uh, to help protect this higher risk population. And this is an example of the importance of taking precautions to protect those at higher risk, like the elderly and people with serious underlying health conditions. We are continuing to work with communities to provide communications and education about illness, including alerting communities to be aware of potential spread. Again, each of us can do our part to protect those who are at risk of more severe disease and it's all of our responsibilities to help prevent the spread of disease. We are still learning about this virus and we're committed to keeping the public informed. As we learn more, we will continue to provide updates as quickly and as timely as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Are there, doctor, are there any questions? Governor, in other states that the governor has ordered that bars and restaurants close as well, except for takeout, how close are we to that? Is that we, everything is under consideration. We are not at that point at that time, at this time. What I would urge people to do is to, again, common sense, follow the, all the, the rules that have been in suggestions made by all the authorities about washing your hands throughout the day. Uh, a, lot, a lot of us, I'd recommend consider not shaking hands for the foreseeable future. And uh, of course, always cover your nose and mouth when you sneeze. We hear those every time anyone 
comments on the best ways to stop the spread. If we can, we want to stop the fast spread and want to have a, if we know it's going to spread, we need it to be manageable and that's why we're taking these steps. We'd like to eliminate it, but that's, that's asking too much at this point. Government yes, ma'am. How are you all handling people that have known exposure to these people who are already confirmed positive or presumptive positive? Are you all monitoring them? What, what measures are being taken place to make sure it's not spreading further? Good question. Dr. Bill? We have been monitoring the close contacts of individuals who are ill that we're aware of. We provide them recommendations about the measures that they should take to monitor themselves for symptoms of illness and the symptoms to look for for 14 days after they've had contact. And should they develop consistent symptoms to report that to their health care providers to see if evaluation and additional testing is indicated. Are you all encouraging them to quarantine in any way? Or I know everyone is encouraged to practice social distancing, but are they encouraged to possibly just stay at home a little more? We are encouraging the close contacts of known cases to self-quarantine. Is there any way to ensure people who are supposed to be self-isolating, is there any way to ensure that they don't go out, run errands, do grocery shopping, things like that? As cases begin to increase, we do not have a way to check on individuals every day and check on their location. And this is the importance of these community-wide messages to ask people to take responsibility, to follow the guidance they've been given to protect others. Superintendent, you said, yeah. Yeah. Superintendent, you said uh, districts were asked just last Thursday to submit plans for two weeks. Yes. It's obviously now an immediate need. Are they ready? Yes, they are. We're able to turn those around in a matter of hours. I know that we had 15 districts that already were approved through their e-learning pilot project that they were involved with. I believe we've already approved 30 plans on Friday, and we have staff working as we speak, look reviewing plans as they come in. So very shortly, we'll have all of those plans approved. And can all districts do that two meals a day? Yes. Yes. Now, it's not open at every school. Schools have to qualify based on their poverty level, free and reduced le lunch level, um, census data. But once a site is up and a, a school is identified, then any student can go in and uh, or be a part of that project. So any student in, who normally gets a free breakfast lunch? Any lunch. student. Any student, whether they're normally uh, on free and uh, reduced lunch or not. So that goes up through 18 years of age. So that would mean all of our students, uh, 780,000 students in the state, uh, plus possibly others, will be working uh, to with the USDA. I have a feeling this could increase uh, because of need. So we'll be working very closely with them. Do we know what percentage of over is? Over on this Are there some daycares in this, or is, is that part of the program of the closures as well? The question is daycares. Uh, I'll answer that. I think daycares are not included, but the governor has encouraged daycares and private schools to follow this same lead that the public schools are doing. Since the closures you, you recommended last week, what's changed to have all the schools closed? I think what's changed is the data that we've been receiving from um, from DHEC as the numbers increase. We worked as hard as we could because we know the burden that this is putting on our working families and we need families to be able to work and continue on their lives. So we tried as hard as we could to make the right decision for South Carolina, but that moment has come where we need to close all schools. Superintendent, now that you guys are closing schools, will you all extend a little bit into the summer to make up for these days? We're not sure yet. All those questions remain to be seen. We've got a lot of those type questions about graduation requirements on um, student teachers there, there are lots of issues now that are coming up but uh, we have been given that authority to make flexibility and change those as needed we'll just have to wait and see how long this goes some, some of the teachers are concerned about their pay um, will you guys be forced for them to use PCO vacation time for that additional time after spring break or will you guys supplement teachers are going to be paid employees are going to be paid uh, we'll be working with them. Again, the question of how the school year is going to run, if we make up days, you know, that, that's just, we will meet that and we will be very generous and liberal in answering those needs when they come up. But right now, we just need to really see how long this is going to last. But I, I want to assure that teachers will be paid. 
bus drivers, cafeteria workers, those folks will be covered. Uh, their districts are going to do everything they possibly can, and we actually need some of them. I will say the district officials, and that is generally the superintendent, will have the ability to call in essential personnel. The executive order states that. So some folks will be continuing to work, adults at the building, and that will be at the discretion of the superintendent. Governor, what about about public libraries? Since a lot of kids will be going there or would be tempted to go there to access computers, will they remain open? Public libraries, yes. Okay. Spring break, is that going to help with the quotas? Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. I, I'll be glad to. Uh, a lot of our districts have spring breaks starting uh, first of April. Uh, I'm sure they're going to be using those. We'll, all of that is just possibilities. We'll see how long this closure will need to be, and if spring break, that would work out very well for those districts to use the spring break. Can teachers go tonight or tomorrow into the schools to get any supplies they might need or anything like that? Yes, they may. Teachers may go to the building. They'll, they'll need to work with their local superintendent and their principal. What are parents expected to do right now? Have you all made any encouragement to employers to work with them if they have young children? Um, yes, me? yes, we have. For, for um, state employees, we have uh, required and encouraged the agencies to do as much as they can to see that those who are at risk or for various reasons need to be out of the office work from home as often as possible and that's the kind of flexibility we would encourage the private businesses and industries to do as well if if possible do that because with the technology today there, there are a lot of things that can be done in that way is yes just, if you mentioned no crowds of more than 100 is that a mandate or is that just a suggestion right that's now? A, that is a recommendation and a very strong suggestion at this point but as you all know, th this is a fluid situation. This is something we have not seen before. Nobody in the country has seen it before. So there will be changes and adjustments as we as we go forward. Are hospitals finding themselves overwhelmed with this? Not at this time. But that's what we're trying to avoid by having people go to that website, uh, to the musc.care, to be screened if they think that they may, may have the, the virus, and then to proceed to a, a, a doctor uh, if it indicates that they, they may have it. You heard the numbers of those who have been tested uh, after they have been screened, and it's a, a small percentage that have, have actually uh, had the virus. But by doing that out of the hospitals and out of the emergency rooms, we're able to take the pressure off the hospital so that they can continue to give the intensive care and the around-the-clock the care that, to those that need it. That is the whole purpose uh, of that, and that's the good news. We now have these labs, MUSC, it was very quickly uh, authorized to, to be a testing uh, lab uh, along with uh, DHEC and the, uh, the, other, the other private ones in the state. Dr. Bell, if you could address uh, children are seem to be the least susceptible to actually getting sick. Why is it important in preventing the spread that we close all the schools? Or has the information changed on the children? Uh, no, the information hasn't changed on children, but in certain congregate settings, uh, diseases can spread more rapidly, and so that is one of the social distancing measures. And in other special facilities like correctional facilities, nursing home facilities, uh, things like military barracks, where there are congregate settings where individuals may spend a long period of time together, there's an increased chance for disease spread. Dr. Bell, what about pregnant women? Is there Are they higher risk, or are they encouraged to stay at home and possibly self-quarantine, or is that not as much a worry? Um, I would say that there's that any pregnant woman is not at any increased risk for being exposed, but that might be considered as, as a special medical condition, and any pregnant woman wouldn't want to have an illness during her pregnancy, so they should specially consider special measures to um, to avoid exposure. And on that, that is one of the categories listed of, among others of the state employees that we are urging to to work from home, pregnant women. Governor, I have a question. Uh, if we've only tested 268 people, do you feel like that's a low number? And if so, why are more people not being tested? It's, it's lower than other, so, some other states. 
It may be higher than some others, but those are the ones that have been indicated by the screening. And as we have stated uh, very often, we are, are working according to the science and to the professionals, and all those who have been screened that indicate they should be tested have been to date. And moving forward, are doctors going to be able to make their own judgment calls as far as if they can? I'm sorry, say again. Moving forward, are doctors going to still have to consult on a patient by patient basis with the CDC, or are they going to be able to make their own judgment calls as far as if they need to test or not? Um, the doctors no longer have to get approval from DHEC to be tested in the DHEC lab, and they've always been able to get testing through the private labs at, at their discretion. Governor, are you suggesting that the Senate should not have normal operations this week? Obviously, you want them to pass the bill regarding the $45 million, but they're, at this point... We want them to pass a lot of things, but that, that will be up to the Senate leadership to make that decision as to how and when they will work. What we want them to do is, is get it done for the people of the state. Are there yes, any sir. considerations for domestic travel restrictions? Big pardon? Any considerations for domestic travel restrictions? We have none at, at this time, but as I say, this is a fluid situation. We are, we are attempting to stay ahead of this situation, anticipate what may happen, and do everything within our power to block the spread in those areas. As, uh, it becomes clear that there are things, uh, other things that need to be done, uh, that, then we'll do them. What's the current count of how many people are hospitalized right now because of COVID-19? Mm -hmm. um, DHEC requires providers and labs to report cases to us, but we're not responsible for following their outcome. Deaths are not reportable, their um, remaining status, so we don't follow the, the course of each individual. We'll not know how many end up being hospitalized, being released, or remaining in the hospital. Does that include their conditions right now? Do we know if any of them are doing poorly or not on the upswing? We don't follow the conditions of individuals, and that, if you were to contact a hospital and ask for that information directly, that would be protected information. Information. Hospitals are not allowed to release the information about an individual's condition without their approval. Wait, so does that mean that there could be deaths in South Carolina we just don't know it? Well, it's extremely unlikely that there would be a death in South Carolina that we didn't know about, but we do not require the report of deaths. We believe that if we, if a death occurred that we would learn about it. How many ventilators and negative pressure rooms are available in South Carolina? Yeah. Um, our, our health regulations uh, keeps that information about bed counts and about um, hospital supplies, so that information is available, and uh, but not from me. We've been hearing from some folks that they've been approved to take the coronavirus test, but they find out the total is about, I think, $200. Is the test free, or will it cost some folks some money? The, the test uh, is free, but um, the cost of a health care visit or an evaluation, if you go in to see the doctor, may be expected to be the same. So it's not necessarily the cost of the test that we may be hearing about. Any more questions? Yeah, for people who are showing symptoms but haven't traveled internationally or come in contact with a person with the coronavirus, um, will the DHEC or CDC guidelines regarding exposure sort of be changing now at all? What they should do is go on online and uh, to musc.care or others that are becoming available and determine what the next step should be and, and if necessary go see the doctor. And just to clarify, how would we learn about a death related to coronavirus? You got the right answer. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, we are requiring that uh, death certificates that be issued uh, specify COVID-19, so we would learn through the death certificates. Did you hear that? Yeah. Okay. As far as the test kits, what what are the what's the capacity for how many tests you guys can conduct daily? Like, what's the number of range on that? Go ahead. Sure. Uh, it's not uh, through the testing that we provide in the DHEC laboratory. Uh, we can do up to as many as three to four hundred a day, uh, and we haven't come anywhere close to that yet. Can you all go over again how families with no Wi-Fi um, could get connection to the buses, um, sure. things like that? Sure. 
Those plans are being finalized. We'll be working with school districts tomorrow and they'll have announcements on their individual school websites as we will also try and connect those to our website as well. Um, so there's a lot of work still to be done. I know Kershaw County is already showing where they're feeding sites and where they're delivering food. You'll be seeing that uh, posted um, overnight possibly and in the morning for well, other school districts. Like school proms, big events for students, how are you all handling that? Well, that's left up to the individual schools, but unfortunately, it's not, it appears it's gonna be a very disruptive year for juniors and seniors particularly. So um, we'll just face that as we get a little closer to that season, but right now, any type of activity is canceled. If people are out of work because of this or even because they must stay home with their kids, how does that affect unemployment benefits? The, uh, uh, effect Can they apply for unemployment benefits if they have to stay home for these two weeks? Yes, there are ways to apply, but the we have an uh, unemployment insurance has a formula that, that, that should and and will take this type of a um, unemployment uh, into consideration. But also the the uh, the administration, the uh, Trump administration, is is making plans to provide funds to compensate or help relieve this burden to some extent. We don't have the details on that, but uh, we, we are confident that there are measures being considered and some will be taken. Governor, we've mandated the closure of schools right now. How close are we to saying, hey, we just need everybody to kind of shut down unless you're essential employees to keep things running? At what point are we going to get there? Well, th those are all of those things. Of course, that's what they're doing in some of the other countries that were not as prepared as we are. We had the uh, the good fortune of, of seeing what happened overseas before it, it, it came here. But uh, we that would be the, the worst case scenario and as has been explained uh, and amplified on uh, television with the experts working uh, in, in Washington and other places is the our task is to try to, as they say, flatten the curve of, of this thing. That is to anticipate what we're going to need in order to keep the contagion down and and we we know how to do it and if if we all do the things that have been recommended we, we ought to be able to do that without ever having to reach the point that you just described does the cdc know, so still need to approve tests or can dhac approve cases say what? does the cdc still need to approve cat tests no. or can dhac take from there's no more no. presumptive policy that's right um, parents may be tempted to send their kids to the movies or the mall or something like that to occupy their time. What would your suggestion be for? I would say use your common sense. Be very careful because we know that the virus is spread by contact. It could be picked up off of a, a surface or from someone else's hand. We know it's produced by coughing and sneezing, and we just have to be very careful. And if you if you think about it, you, you find yourself touching things all day long that uh, could lead to the infection. That's why we have to continuously wash your hands. Soap and water is, is the best protection, and that's at everybody's disposal. The best protection is soap and water. It sounds so easy, but it's hard to, it's, it's hard to do that in a, in a mobile population, a multifaceted population like we have. Dr. Bell, to go back to symptoms, what should someone look for immediately to say, hey, I might need to take a day off. Uh, this isn't seeming quite like a normal kind of cold. What's the difference there? I know you said it's very similar, but what's the difference that people should look for? I say the main symptom is actually fever because the rest of these symptoms are nonspecific and can represent an allergy or something like that. So we say it's not cough or shortness of breath or fever, it is cough and shortness of breath and fever. It's that compilation of symptoms that people should be aware of. Other things associated like um, muscle aches or something like that, a sore throat, but fever would be the main symptom to really pay attention to. And I know those are considered, I guess, the mild symptoms. What will be the escalation of that? What do we see when this starts to head downward? A significant, um, uh, a, a significant increase in shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, tightness in the chest, chest pain, something like that. So any kind of um, worsening of symptoms like that with breathing, they should immediately seek medical attention. If they have milder symptoms and they would not normally seek care for that, we're not encouraging everyone to get a test to find out if they have the COVID-19 infection. 
So if they have milder symptoms, most people will recover at home without medical evaluation. Dr. Bell, is there any more information about how the patient at Lexington Medical Center, or the nursing home, got uh, coronavirus? Uh, that person has no known contacts with um, a known uh, positive, no history of travel. So um, we are investigating possible visitations or somehow the introduction into the nursing home facility. And the close contacts of that individual have been identified and are being isolated. Dr. Bell, Dr. Bell what makes um, this so much more concerning than the regular flu? Well, the regular flu, there is a vaccine. And so the number of people in the population who are susceptible to flu is dramatically reduced by the vaccine. And that's why we strongly encourage that every single year. And if there's not a vaccine available, you we're more likely to see a much larger number of cases because there is no other protection except for the social distancing measures. And so this is this is a very good example of why we strongly encourage the flu vaccine and other vaccines every single year to prevent disease outbreaks like this. When when a protective measure like that is available, it is critical to take advantage of that. If we don't have a vaccine, then we expect to see larger number of cases. Dr. Bell, I know a lot of people say that it can take 10 or so days for a lot of symptoms to show up and that uh, we may be seeing a wave of more people in the coming days that bring these numbers up. Is that something you all are anticipating? We do ex expect to see more cases, as we, and that's why we're testing more. And as expected, we are identifying more cases. We understand how the disease is spread from person to person. So uh, that's why we encourage people to stay home when they're ill to prevent that. We don't expect to stop the spread, but we know that we can slow the spread, and that will allow our healthcare system to more slowly absorb the cases and to provide care for those who need it most. What do you say to people who say that this is just uh, hysteria, that this is an overreaction? Well, we, we tell people not to panic. It's not something to panic about, to be rational, uh, rational about what to expect, so that when we see more cases, that doesn't mean that this is something that is completely out of control. We've seen it in other states. And, um, and so to, to do what we know works is most important because panic doesn't help. And uh, in very simple measures are effective. And so that's what we're advising people to do. Yes. As far as you know, is anyone else in that Lexington nursing home showing any symptoms right now? No, we're not aware of any other symptoms in that nursing home at this time. Dr. Bell, if you can address um, how the um, adding NUSC to the, the folks who can process these tests, how will that speed up our ability to get those tests? Um, well, it gives providers more access to testing, so there's no um, there's no um, funnel or something like that. The more wide availability of providers to make the decision on their own, if their patients meet the um, the, the symptoms to be tested, so it gives us a, an ability to test more people more ra more Does rapidly. Does that mean we might get them back closer or sooner than 48 hours? Um, well, each individual test, the turnaround time for each individual test will remain the same. Dr. Bell, with the two Anderson County cases that you all are investigating, can you confirm that several hospital employees have to be quarantined? I don't have, I'm not aware of that information. Some agencies have changed the way that they respond to emergencies. Has a state addressed to those agencies what they should do? Like they don't respond to certain kinds of calls because of the being I'm sorry, repeat the question. Some agencies please. have changed the way that they're responding. Some calls that they go to, police departments, fire departments, wearing extra equipment. Any, mm -hmm. any discussion on that statewide? Do you, do you have I'm some? not sure we can comment, but I don't know if we have to comment. I, I, have, I have no detailed information on that, although <laughs> I know that there are discussions going on. I'm aware of those. Superintendent, in terms of continuing food programs at school, I know we sort of touched on that, but are families expected to go to the schools, or I think you said that there's a way that you are going to get it to them? How's that going to work right. again? Uh, a combination, I think, and, and each school district will be announcing their plan. They may ask those parents who can to come drive by and pick up a grab-and-go meal, but certainly we want to provide meals out to the rural areas and those students who don't have transportation. So it will be a combination of both. But I want to assure parents that their children will have an opportunity to be fed and to get instruction, and we will be delivering that if necessarily 
necessary using our school buses. And what other recommendations do you have for parents who may not have anyone to watch their kids during the Well, day? I think this is really a good time. I, I saw on Twitter last night where a friendly neighbor uh, offered that she would watch someone's child and they could come to her house. So I think that would be a great Good Samaritan kind of thing to do now. If you're at home and you know a single mom, reach out and say, could I help you? Your children can stay with me. Or it's a great thing that churches uh, could help with. So this is a time for South Carolinians to really reach out, be friendly, and look for places that they can help. Dr. Bell, can you provide any more details about the two Anderson County and the one Greenville case that you guys are looking into? Like we, any, any more details you can give us? Where were the people traveling? Do they have family members? Did they just randomly get these symptoms? Well, we know that no one randomly gets the symptoms, that, that, that at some point someone has been exposed. And so we will uh, not be able to identify the source of all illnesses. And we are continuing our investigations to identify the close contacts who might be at highest risk. Are you all anticipating a sharp increase in cases? I know that we saw so many people flying home um, after the White House made their announcement the other day and they overwhelmed so many of our major airports. Presumably some of them are coming back to our state. Are you all expecting numbers to go up after those people internationally traveling? Um, we're not expecting a sharp increase in cases if we take appropriate measures, but we are expecting to see more counties reporting cases and we hope to, um, to be able to slow the spread. And to be clear, since COVID-19 is reportable on death certificates, does that mean you will report to us when there is a COVID-19 death? Yes, I believe we will report the first death of COVID-19 in the state. And now, so in terms of inspectors, deaths. Dr. Bell, um, so are they still allowed to do inspections at the nursing homes and have they been to the facilities? Uh, those, those inspections are encouraged to continue. Are there any more questions? Are, are at the Lexington nursing home, are, are patients being isolated if they had any contact with the one patient who had, um, uh, who tested positive? Yes. And how are healthcare workers there taking, what kind of precautions are they taking? We evaluate the type of contact each healthcare provider had with the patient who was infected to see if they were wearing appropriate personal protective equipment. And so we um, are, we have identified those healthcare professionals, the facility is aware, and they know what to do with asking them to monitor for symptoms if they have been a contact. You specified first test, um, first death, subsequent deaths also will be reported by this team that we're seeing right now? Subsequent deaths? You mentioned specifically that the only the first that you'd report the first uh, South Carolina deaths from COVID-19. I'm wondering if all subsequent yes, deaths. There, also, there's a mechanism to report all subsequent deaths of COVID-19. Not from coroners, from DHEC officials or state or government officials. I'm sure we'll become aware of those and, and track those, and we'll figure out how the best way to share those in the future. But Dr. Bell, I want to confirm, South Carolina, we do have enough kids to test all or the however many number of people for this virus, correct? We are, we are not having any shortage of the availability of testing in South Carolina. However, in other jurisdictions where they're testing a lot of people, there are some shortages. And for that reason, so that South Carolina can best be prepared, we are strongly advising the appropriateness of testing so that we don't get into a situation where we do experience shortages. Two more questions. Dr. Bell, um, a lot of churches didn't have church services today, but a lot of them still did. Do we have information that any of these cases so far identified came from a church or a social circle within a church? We don't have any evidence to suggest that because we have a way of mapping cases based on their onsets of illness. And so if there is an exposure in a setting like a church, we would call that a common source exposure. And we'd see, we would see a large spike in cases at one point in time. And so what we do know is that we're seeing person to person transmission because there is a staggering, a slow staggering of the onsets of illness. And that is different from a point source exposure that could have occurred in a church. So we know that we're, what we're seeing is person-to-person -person transmission and not a common source exposure. Dr. Bell, if someone had close contact unprotected with someone who's now tested positive, how long does it take and how do you all go about tracking the people that they had close contact with? How long does it take to reach out to those people if they went to a buffet or how, how does that process work? 
Well, the incubation period for the illness, the maximum incubation period that we know about is about, is about 14 days. So we um, prioritize the close contacts of individuals and tell them to monitor for symptoms for 14 days. In large group settings, we do not consider all those individuals to be close contacts, to be at risk. So that's why we give general community measures um, to avoid large gatherings, but we don't attempt to identify everyone who's in, who visited a buffet or something like that because there's nothing additional for those individuals to do if they've been in a setting where a case has been beyond what we've already recommended. And therefore, we don't say, if you are at the buffet, then you should do this because there's nothing different for them to do. Dr. Bell, what are the specifics of these kids? Is there a certain thing that has to be in it for the testing? So the, this terminology, the difference between a kit and a test is creating a lot of confusion. A test is what is performed on an individual. They submit a sample and they get a specific test result like you might get that you have a positive flu test or you have another positive test. A kit refers to what a laboratory has that can perform hundreds or thousands of tests. The kit contains the chemical reagents to detect the virus. So the kit exists in the laboratory and the tests are performed in a healthcare setting. So the, a, a, a sample is drawn from a patient and that we consider that a test. That sample is submitted to a lab and they use a kit to run batches of hundreds of tests at a time to report the test results back to the providers. Okay, so are there enough kits in South Carolina? Sorry, yes. Okay. Are schools being disinfected during the closures? Yes. A deep cleaning is a plan for schools to use um, during this time that schools are closed. Okay. And will teachers and other staff continue to be paid during the school closure? Absolutely. Teachers will be paid. Okay. Y'all, thank you very much. One thing I would like to say to all the people of South Carolina, as you can tell, the your, your representatives and public servants in government are working hard in what we call Team South Carolina. It is a great professional team, but this, the, the things that we are doing would not be possible. The successes and the precautions that we're implementing would not be possible without the great people of South Carolina who are volunteering, who are being good neighbors, and are taking, taking care of the people of our state. So we thank them and thank you very much.